then I think uh, Tom went over to Sci-Fi Channel and tried to pitch a four-hour miniseries of a continuation, but then they changed it. And I think the actors were so close to being part of a, you know, getting to be in an updated show, that it was very sad for them. So I think they have mixed feelings and conflicted feelings, but I, it has nothing to do with the cast or the crew of the new show. It's just because obviously they got very, very close to getting to come back and reprise their roles. And I think all those actors would have loved, I would have loved to have seen, even if it was a miniseries, and they just brought it back for one miniseries to kind of update it like they did with Star Trek, I think that would have been great. And then move on to doing a reimagined version would have been wonderful. But you know, the cost and the expense of that obviously was prohibitive and they didn't do that. So, uh, but I know right now that there is still a little talk. I just heard from Tom DeSanto and um, Glenn Larson that he thinks he got the rights cleared up for the movie rights and he might do either a movie of the original series or he might even do an animated version, an animated movie, which is what Tom DeSanto had obviously pitched and got, got a green light on, but Universal mixed it because they didn't want to have any confu confusion between the two shows. But I mean, honestly, like Star Trek had Next Generation, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, they had all these shows and they all could fit in that Star Trek universe. So I don't think one would take away from the other. I think, you know, this new show is so well established now. It's a wonderful uh, produced, acted show. I don't think it needs to feel threatened by anybody or anything. So uh, again, it would just give a chance for a lot of people to maybe get some resolution with the original show. So we'll see what happens. Uh, stay tuned and look for the, you know, some of the news groups and go over to BattlestarGalactica.com and you can check out and see what's going on there as well. Um, another question here, I, I, I want to leave at least 15 minutes at the end to play a couple of trailers and then put on a little bit of this uh, comedy reel if I can. Yes? Well, I think what he does is he, he goes and he uh, gets everybody into one place and he gets some, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, what's that, high explosive? Um, <laughs> blows everybody up and then he finds this ship floating in space and there's all, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I think I think um, I think this character, interestingly enough, might be a little bit like the Baltar character of the old show, uh, had he been brought back to the fleet. He, he, I, I honestly don't look. See, people go, "Oh, you play such a good bad guy," you know. And I go, "Yeah, but the, maybe this is the way all bad guys feel." I, I don't feel like a bad guy, you know. I, I feel like this guy really has his beliefs. This guy really believes what he's doing. And, you know, Nelson Mandela was the bad guy in, in South Africa. You know, the government thought he was the bad guy. Everybody thinks everybody that's on the other side is the bad guy. And then when the, the rebels get in, and then the people that just got pushed out of power, they're the bad guys. Uh, the key is, is that, especially, I think, in Ron Moore's universe, and maybe in life, nobody is all good or all bad. Some people are kind of got it more together than others, but everybody is capable of falling off that cliff. Everybody is capable under the right conditions of going to the dark side. And I think that this character has struggled for his ideals, for his political beliefs, fighting for what he feels is a more idealistic version of freedom. But you know, after spending 20 years watching your loved ones die, suffering, being tortured, I think sometimes you end up going over that line. And I think uh, Tom Zarek has gone over that line. And maybe like the prodigal son is struggling to find his way back. But God knows if he's gonna make it. The key is, I think he's a damaged human being who still cares, but doesn't know how to operate within the boundaries. Has always had to operate outside the boundaries, and maybe for the first time in his life, he's trying to find a way to exert his uh, ideals within the system. The question is, can you do that? And as we've all learned, the system isn't always honest. The system can be just as corrupt as the so-called bad guys. So the key is, you know, who are the good guys and who are the bad guys? I mean, I hate to say it, but Roslyn stopped me from being vice president. <laughs> Illegally. She did not play fair. And of course, at the end of that show, you know, I honored her. I said, you know, you are a worthy opponent. He recognized in her, her political astuteness and that she was very, very skilled, maybe more so than most people believe. Anyway, great actress, by the way, Mary McDonald. What a wonderful, wonderful actress. Yeah. There's one now. Sorry, 
Brain. That was the last, like the last of the Higgins, that was the last of the Daggett's. That's just, uh, you know, a lot of people love the Daggett, a lot of people hate the Daggett. And I, I always thought that it might be cool to have the Daggett kind of walking through a, down a launch tube. And uh, <laughs> at the last minute, he either turns left or right or gets hit. The question is, who knows? Uh, but but uh, you would have served, half the people would have been happy and half the people would have been devastated had that happened, of course. Uh, but you know, who knows? They might bring back their a new version of the Daggett because now we have CGI and you can do really, really cool stuff with that. So God knows what they'll come up with. Those were three little monkeys in bondage who kept taking turns in that little monkey suit. Yeah, it, it, it was actually, I think, a little cruel. Those poor little guys had to be in that little contraption that was uh, controlled by remote control. Uh, yes? Well, will you see any homages to original stories or episodes in the new series? Uh, yeah, you will be. Actually, they did the Kane episodes already. Uh, Commander Kane and the Pegasus. If you all remember that from the original show, uh, they've already filmed those episodes. So, I don't know. I, I, I don't have the exact date. When does the new, the new season start? <laughs> Duh. Um, yeah, the Kane episodes come up around uh, episode eight, seven or eight, and I won't tell you. Uh, although they did have it on the news about who was playing Commander Kane. In fact, it's Admiral Kane now, not uh, Commander Kane. But uh, it is. It is. I, I, this was already out. I, I know it was on the news thing. But it, it's a woman, as you know. For those of you that don't know, it's a woman playing the character, and uh, the lady is the one. If you saw Swimming with the Sharks, and she was also an ensign on the original on Next Generation. What's that woman's name? I think that's, yeah, that's who's playing. She's a wonderful actress, so it's going to be interesting to see how she plays that character. But uh, those episodes are coming out very, very soon. Um, another question that someone's dying to ask me? Like the color of my underpants? No. Yeah. What do you say? <laughs> the what? Yes. Well, I, one of the things I love about Ron Moore's writing, and it's kind of what I believe too, great drama comes out of great tragedy. And so a show like Battlestar is all about one tragedy after another one catastrophic event after another. Which, by the way, is what makes a show so heroic, is the fact that, you know, great tragedy brings out the hero, brings out the good guy and the bad guy and all of this. Sometimes we're the good guys, sometimes we're the heroes, sometimes we chicken out and we run the other way. Um, great tragedy always brings out the best drama, best pathos, it brings out the best humor. And so I think that when you put characters in life and death circumstances like these characters are, you're going to have some incredibly provocative, cutting edge stories. And from the stories that I'm reading, man, they're just, uh, I, I just love the writing. I honestly just love the writing. I can't get enough of it.